Hi everyone, this is Wan Leong. So in this particular video, we're going to talk about Half-Life. So uh, before we actually go on with the questions and uh, answers session, so first thing first, what is Half-Life? Half-Life in radioactive actually means the time taken for the activity to become half of its initial mass, initial activity, or uh, initial percentage. Okay, so that is the meaning of Half-Life, the time taken. So uh, for Half-Life, actually, there is a few ways to solve a half-life equation so I'm gonna start by taking out my pen all right so half-life the first method is actually to use the decay uh, series so in the decay series we can actually use um, probably 100% all right if we do not know what's the mass or whatsoever so uh, after the first half-life one half of 100% would be 50% Alright, so that is uh, 50 and then another half-life, so half-life symbol is T1 over 2, so half of a 50% is going to be 25%. Alright, and then after that, um, another half-life, 25% is going to be 12.25. Uh, you double check, 12.5%. Uh, Right, so on and so forth, depending how many half-life we're going to do. Or we can actually use the mass. So let's just say the initial mass is 10 gram. The first half-life. After one half-life, it's going to be 5 gram. After another half-life, it's going to be 2.5 gram. That is one of the methods that's using the decay series. Alright, the other method is actually using a formula. Alright, so for the formula wise, okay, for the formula we can actually use, uh, let's just say number of radioactive nuclei. So that will be n equals to one over two. That this is representing half. N is the number of half life, and then the initial number of the radioactivity. So, um. Normally, we will have already the initial number, or you can change it to mass equals to 1 over 2 number of half-life and then the initial mass. Or we can also put it as activity, which is the count rate per second, which is A equals to 1 over 2 number of half-life and then initial activity. Alright, so there's two methods for us to do the decay series and another method is actually to use the table but um, I prefer to use the decay series most of the time. So I'm going to show you guys how to do the question first. So in this particular question, a sample of lead 211 of mass 69 gram has a half-life of 36.1 minute. Okay, so over here, the initial mass M0 is Oh, sorry, not 69, it's 96 gram. And then the half-life is actually 36.1 minute. Alright, the first question asks, A, what fraction of the mass has not decayed after 108.3 minutes? Alright, so A, the total time taken is 108.3 minutes. So I need to know how many half-life is there. So I'm going to use this particular formula. The time taken is number of half-life. Multiply the time taken for the half-life. So N equals to T over half-life. So that would be 108.3 divided by 36.1. So press your calculator and we will be able to get 3. So there is 3 half-life that has already been taken place at 108.3 minutes. So how am I going to do this particular question? Okay, so we have to first find the number uh, of half-life which we already did. Alright, the second one, I'm going to use a decay equation. Okay, so what fraction? So at the initial state, we assume that it's 1, a full, uh, full value is to be 1. So we need 3 half-life. So the first half-life, half of 1 is going to be 1 over 2. 
and then another half-life. So 1 over 2 divided by 2, we will actually get 1 over 4. So that is the second half-life. We have to go to 3 half-life. So t 1 over 2, 1 over 4 divided by 2, we will get 1 over 8. So the fraction that has not decayed, so fraction not decayed, is actually 1 over 8. Alright, so this is the only chapter that we can actually leave the answer in fraction or else in physics normally we are not allowed to leave the answer in fraction, it has to be in decimal places. Alright, so question B actually asks us what is the mass of the decayed product after this period of time. So what is the mass of the decayed product? 1 over 8 is the mass, is the fraction that has not decayed. Alright, so we want to know what is the mass that has decayed. So in order to do this question, all right, I'm going to erase this off. I'm going to erase this question off already. I hope all of you, um, since this is a video, you can actually pause and go back, so on like that. Okay, so I'm just going to erase this off. Alright, now because this is a production, a video production, so I would have already erased that off already. So right now let's go back to the question. Just now we have the fraction of uh, not decayed to be 1 over 8. Okay, so the half-life that has already been went through is 3 times. So part B is actually the mass of the decayed products after this particular period. Alright, so there's actually two methods to solve this question. So I'm going to try the first question. I'm going to show the first method first. First method is actually from the fraction value. So from the first part, okay, the fraction not decayed. Fraction not decayed is actually 1 over 8. So the fraction that has already decayed Alright, fraction that has already decayed would be 1 minus 1 over 8 I will get 7 over 8 Alright, so from this value The mass of decayed would be 7 over 8 multiply by the initial mass which is 96 gram so the mass that has already decayed in this particular case is 84 gram all right so this is the first method to solve the question so for method number two all right because we know from the first part a that there is three half-life that has already been went through so i'm using back the decay series method whereby the initial is 96 gram Okay, after one half life, 96 divided by 2, we will get 48 gram. After another half life, it's going to be 24 gram. And then another half life is going to be 12 gram. So 12 gram is the amount of mass that has, uh, uh, has not decayed. So the mass of decayed okay the mass that has decayed is 96 gram minus by 12 gram we will get 84 gram all right so these are two different methods there are at least i think four methods to do this so i'm only going to do two methods in this particular video all right so let's go to the next question okay so um, the next question is actually, this is a half-life uh, decay graph, alright? So diagram for the radioactivity decay graph for a radioactive material. So over here, we can see that the radioactivity, alright, the count rate per second, that's the amount of radioactivity. And then the initial radioactivity is 400. The x-axis is actually time, alright, the unit is actually in seconds. 
So what is the half-life of the radioactive material? Now, if this question is a paper 2 question, structured question, no uh, multiple choice question. So normally, this type of question got two marks. One mark is actually to show on the graph. So half of a 400 is actually 200. So taking your ruler, draw a straight line from 200 y-axis towards the graph, this point, and then vertically downwards, point an arrow. Okay, so we know that the T half-life for this particular radioactive material is actually 2 seconds. So how, if this is a structure question, what is the max is going to be? Okay, so the max over here will come from one mark from the graph and then another mark to state the answer and the unit together. Alright, so that is actually how we solve this particular question. So let's try another one. Now, this next question is a graph uh, that shows the decay curve of a radioactive material and the axis here is uh, activity, it actually counts per minute and then the x-axis is actually time per minute. So if the initial activity of the radioactive material is 800 counts per minute, what is the activity after one hour? Okay, now, so the initial activity A0 is actually 800 counts per minute. Alright, per minute, okay. And then, what is the activity after one hour? Okay, let's look at the graph. Half of 800 is 400. So the half-life is actually 15 minutes. So I'm going to write that T half equals to 15 minutes. And they say, what is the activity after one hour? So the time, small t, is actually one hour. And one hour, we know that one hour has... 60 minutes so you need to make sure that you convert into uh, whatever half-life or the graph question is about so that would be the half-life okay uh, sorry the the total time taken so now over here we're going to do the calculation first so we have to understand how many half-life that has been so using the formula of small t equals to n e half-life the number of half-life would be small t over half-life and that would be 60 divided by 15 and we would get 4 half-life if I'm not wrong okay that would be 4 half-life so that's 4 times of the half-life so the question asks um, what is the activity after 1 hour so in this particular case I'm going to use the formula so the formula is A equals to 1 over 2 N a0. Alright, so 1 over 2 multiplied by number of half-life that would be 4 and then the initial activity is actually 800 counts per minute. So having this, we will get 1 over 16 times 800 and the answer would be 50 counts per minute. Alright, so that is how we do this particular question if it is a structure question. Okay, so let's try this other question. Now, this is uh, not a half-life question, but this is a decay series question. But why not? Okay, diagram 5 shows the decay sequence for the nucleus uranium-234 to radon-222. What is the number of alpha particles and beta particles emitted during this process? Now, you can see that... Um, from this particular graph, we have uranium 23492. Okay, I'm just gonna write that here. Uranium 23492. It says that in the question, it says become Raiden 222. So I'm just gonna directly write Raiden 222. And the proton number here is 86. Okay. So, they ask how many alpha particles and beta particles that has already been emitted throughout the whole entire process. If you were to look into this particular graph, okay, you can see that this difference is by 4 atomic number. Here, another 4 atomic number difference. And here, another 4 atomic number difference. 
in order for it to come from this uranium 92 this changes by two proton number it reduces by two proton number and again reduced by two proton number so every single change from uranium to thorium to ray uh this one is radon Renon and then Radon. So in this particular case, uh, each of this has a change of 4 atomic mass number and 2 proton number. And for a decay series, we have 3 types of decay. We have Alpha Decay, we have Beta Decay, and we have Gamma Decay. Gamma Decay which is energy. So Alpha Decay is also known as Alpha 42 or helium 42 beta decay is 0 negative 1 or electron 0 negative 1 so in this particular case every single decay changes by 4 proton uh, atomic number and 2 proton number so 42 is actually alpha decay so from this particular graph there is 3 3 alpha particle that has been emitted out and is there any beta particle emitted out from this particular graph there isn't any beta particle that has been emitted out so what's the number of the alpha particles and the beta particles emitted it would be c 3 alpha particles and 0 beta particles so this is actually one way to solve it okay so since this is an objective question i'm gonna leave it there Okay, now let's go to the next one. Okay, in this particular question, now this one is um, a little bit more challenging. Okay, this particular radioactive decay is a little bit more challenging, whereby, okay, nucleus uranium 23892 decay through a uh, few stages until it reaches a stable nucleus. Particles emitted in the order are alpha, beta, beta, alpha, alpha. So which of the following nucleus is not a product of the decay series? Now, in order to do this question, so it has undergone this much of radioactive decay. So I'm going to split my screen into half. So I'm going to start. It undergo alpha, beta, beta, alpha, alpha decay. So uranium 238-92 undergo the first decay to emit out one alpha particle which is 4 2 all right so i'm gonna label this as a because i have no idea what element is that but in order to solve this i need to balance the atomic number and i need to balance the proton number so before reaction is 238 after reaction alpha particle is 4 so in order for here this one would be 234 because 234 plus 4 we will get 238 and then the proton number over here before the decay is 92. So alpha has a 2 proton number. So in order to balance, this one has to be 90. Because 90 plus 2 will be 92 as well. So this is the first decay. The second decay, I'm going to copy this A here. 2, 3, 4, 90. It will undergo... Okay, so I've already underwent... a. Uh, alpha decay now is a beta decay so it will become a daughter nuclei of b and then beta decay zero negative one okay all right in order not to confuse student i'm not going to use b i'm going to change it to c okay i'm going to change that to c Alright, so now I'm going to balance the, the proton number and also the atomic mass number. So 2, 3, 4 before reaction. Beta has 0 after the decay. So here will still remain as 2, 3, 4. Okay, then for the proton number, before the decay is 90. So after the decay, because beta is negative 1, in order to become 90, C has to be 91. Because 91 minus 1, you will get 90. Then the proton number for this decay will be balanced. Okay, so that is the second decay. Then number three, copy C down. That will be 2, 3, 4, 91. Undergo a decay to become daughter nuclei D by emitting out a beta particle again. So plus 
beta 0, negative 1. Okay? So, 2, 3, 4 for the atomic number before the decay, after the decay, because beta is 0 atomic mass number, so D would be also 2, 3, 4. And then the proton number before the decay for C is 91. After the decay, in order to become 91 still, this one has to be 92. Okay, so D, 2, 3, 4, 92. Okay, now that would be the third decay. The fourth decay is from D, 2, 3, 4, 92. It decays become E plus an alpha decay. So that would be alpha 4, 2. So here 2, 3, 4 before the decay. After the decay, it has to be 2, 3, 4 also. So that would be 2, 3, 0. Right? 2, zero, two 3, 0 plus 4 will be 2, 3, 4. Then the proton number before decay is 92. After the decay, it will be 90 plus 2. That will be 92 as well. So, fifth decay is from E, 2, 3, 0, 90. Decays becomes F plus alpha decay. So that would be alpha 4, 2. So atomic mass number 2, 3, 0 before the decay. After decay, 2, 2, 6 plus 4. That would make 2, 3, 0. Proton number before decay is 90. So after decay, 88 plus 2, we will get 90. Now, so technically I am already done writing all this equation. So the question says, which is not the product of this particular decay series? So let's look. The product of the decay series are actually located here. These are the product of the decay series. And this one as well. Okay, so let's try. Braden 226.88 So check back to see if our daughter nuclei of A, C, D, E, F has a 226 atomic mass number and an 88 proton number, which is actually F. 226.88 So this is a product of the decay series. Then thorium 23090. So check back. 23090 is actually my E. So thorium 23090 is our product of the decay series. Next is PA23491. So 23491 is actually C. 23491. So again, this is the product of our decay series. Uranium 23493. But here, 23490. Not Uranium 23493. And then here, I've got 23492. Again, it's not 93 proton number. So the answer is actually D. It's not the product of our decay series. Okay, so that is how we do this particular equation. Uh, sorry, this question. Now, this particular qu next question, okay, is actually to show the radioactivity decay graph for a material radioactive material. What is the half life of this radioactive material? So this is a very uh, straightforward, objective question. So the initial activity is actually four hundred. Half of a four hundred is two hundred. So drawing the dotted line from two hundred. What's the graph and then vertically downwards we get two seconds so what's the half-life of the radioactive material uh, radioactive material two seconds okay so that's how we do the questions now if I'm not wrong this should be one of the last few questions I think the last second questions now in this particular question a half-life of a phosphorus 32 is 15 days so go to right here the half-life is 15 days okay a sample is tested and found to contain 45.0 gram of phosphorus so I'm just gonna write M equals to 45.0 gram how much phosphorus 32 was present in the sample 45 days before the sample was tested so Previously is after, now it's 45 days before, okay? So, in order to do this question, I need to know how many half-life before that 45 gram of sample being found, okay? So, in order to do that question, I'm again taking the formula small t equals to n 
half-life. So number of half-life is 45 divided by 15 and that would be 3. So 3 times before, okay? So in order to do this question, I'm going to do backwards. I'm going to use the decay series again, okay? So, okay. Okay, so I need to know 45 days before. What is the mass before uh, 45 days before? So in order to do this, okay, I'm going to start from right hand side. So 45 gram. To get to 45 gram, which means it have to undergo one half life. So 45 times 2, we will get 90 gram. And then, the second half-life, 90 times 2, we get 180 gram. Okay? And then, another half-life, which is 3 half-life, this one would be 360 gram. So what does this actually mean? It means that, um, today I found 45 gram. For, uh, 45 days before this, how much is the initial mass of the radioactive material of phosphorus 32? Alright, so 45 days with a half-life of 15 days, it takes 3 times of the half-life. So I go backwards. This one would be today. So 45 days backwards, 45 days ago, is equivalent to 3 half-life. Okay, equivalent to 3 half-life. So backwards, it's going to be 360 gram of the initial activity. So the answer is actually... Okay, now last question. Diagram 1 shows the graph of radioactivity against time for two radioisotopes X and Y. Which statement is true? Okay, so it says that X is actually less stable than Y. From a decay graph, we cannot say which is uh, more stable or unstable because we have no idea what's the ma atomic mass number. All right, so obviously A cannot be considered. Then the decay rate of X is actually higher than Y. Now, decay rate means the rate divided by time, but the most accurate one, which one is it? Okay, let's go to C first. So X and Y are suitable to be used in industries. How can we actually know what industries are we talking about? Some industries will need more longer half-life. Some industries will need shorter half-life. But if you can see, the time at the x-axis is actually in seconds. What industry actually needs such a fast um, uh, decaying material? All right. So the last one is actually the half-life of X is longer than the half-life of Y. All right, because this is based on a graph. So what I'm going to do is N half, I assume that N half is somewhere here. This is N divided by 2. I'm going to draw a dotted line. Okay, and then I'm going to draw vertically down here. So this is the half-life for Y. And then I'm going to draw a dotted line here. This is a half-life for x. So this actually means that half-life of x is actually longer time compared to the half-life of y. So this is more direct. So in this particular case, I would choose the answer as d because it's directly from the graph. All right, The decay rate of x is higher than y. This one is not really true because once we have calculated this, we will know that the decay rate of x is actually much smaller compared to y. Alright, so we are done actually doing the uh, problem solving for uh, radioactive decay and also the half-life question. I hope that from this particular video, you will know how to solve your uh, questions regarding the half-life and also the decay uh, uh, the decay series question already so that's all of my uh, video today please if you like this particular video click like subscribe and also follow my particular youtube video all right okay that's all bye